Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make bedia. Okay, so the first thing I have is my chuck tender roast, and this is about 2 pounds. If you guys have a bigger roast, about 5 or 6 pounds, this sauce will work uh, just as well for that. Okay, so to start off, I have 5 chili de arbol, I have a half of clove garlic, and I have 2 celery sticks and a half of an onion. And to a large pan, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to saute my vegetables. Okay, after a couple minutes and my vegetables are all seared up, I'm going to add in my meat. And searing the meat first is just going to give it a little more flavor. And then flip it over and sear the other side. Just using a roast with bone in, I couldn't find one, so this one does not have bone. Since it doesn't have bone, I am filling up the pot with some chicken broth that I did make a week ago, if you can see all the fat on the top. But you guys can just use water if you don't have any chicken broth. Okay, so just fully submerge your meat. Next, moving on to our chili sauce, we have some chili de arbol. Next, I have some New Mexico chili pots, but if you guys have California chili pots, those are exactly the same. Okay, next I have some ancho chili. If you guys can't find the ancho chili, pasilla works just fine. When it comes to the chilies, you're going to want to remove the stems and all of the seeds. As you can see, I was struggling a little more with the ancho chili. They were a little harder to get out, but I made it work. Going back to my meat, I'm adding one bay leaf. That is just going to help the meat get a really good flavor that we're looking for. Once you deseeded all of your chilies, you're going to want to put them all into the meat broth. Keep in mind that the meat has already been cooking for about one hour. Okay, just push your chilies down and make sure they're completely submerged. After the chilies have been cooking for about 20 minutes, we're going to pull them all out. Uh, along with that, we're going to take out the piece of onion and the garlic clove we put in there earlier. I leave the celery in there because I don't really like it in my sauce, but that's up to you guys. I just use it to give the meat a little more flavor. Now that we've got that all out, we're going to throw it into our blender. And it is a lot of chili guys, so you might have to do about two or three batches. Not overfill your blender because it will make a huge mess. Okay, so taking a little bit of the chili water from the broth, and we're just going to use that to mix it. Okay, so after I have all of my chili blended, I'm just going to add one tablespoon of oregano. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of cumin. And I'm adding one tablespoon of salt. And then one tablespoon of chicken bouillon seasoning. As you can see, the sauce is fairly thick, so I'm just going to add water into my blending container. That is going to ensure that we don't waste any of the chili in there, and it's going to help us strain the chili a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm putting my strainer over the meat, and I'm just going to add my chili. As you can see, it's really thick, and it's going to have trouble straining through. But that's why we saved the water on the side. So now as you push it through, you can just see that it's helping the chili come out a lot easier. Once you strain through all of your chili, the meat is still going to be fairly hard because it's only been about an hour and a half of cooking. So I leave it on for about 4 hours and after 4 hours it's fork tender like this. Depending on the size of your roast, the time may vary. If it's bigger, it's definitely going to take longer. Also, if you notice that your meat is popping out, just keep adding water because the water will evaporate. Okay, after my roast is completely done, I here I am just shredding it up into smaller pieces. And now I'm just taking a little bit of that reserved chili water and I'm adding it right on top of the meat to keep it moist and juicy. Next for a consomme, we're just chopping up some onion, some cilantro, and lime. To your consomme if you want, you can take it out and some people like to add tomatoes to it, but I personally don't. Here's my consomme and I'm just sprinkling a little bit of lime juice right on top. Next I'm adding a little bit of oil to the pan just to get our tortilla nice and crispy. I'm dipping my tortilla into the sauce and then I'm going to fry it directly on top of the oil. After it's gone to your desired crunchiness, you're just going to give it a flip. And this is the part where you would add your meat and your cheese. Like I said, if you guys want it a little bit crispier, keep it on there a little bit longer to fry. I personally like mine a little softer, almost like enchiladas. So here I am just flipping it over like a taco. And next I'm going to get some of the juice from the broth and I'm going to pour it directly right on top. If you guys like this video, please go like and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys.